Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hot Fix, which is, of course, the best video game podcast there is on the internet. And uh, today, we're going to talk about GDC. Um, but before we get into that, I best introduce our illustrious guest, Mr. Sidestrafe. Um, he is a hello. Uh, he is a legend, ladies and gentlemen. He uh, I would say he's a fine purveyor of entertainment with standards. I do believe. Thanks for having me. He also has the best thumbnails. You know what? Right, I really like the thumbnails on your channel. Very simplistic, but it's like you're a cameraman, like a little photographer. If people in -game knew paparazzi. how much time I spend uh, acquiring uh, screenshots, I, 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 you know what? I, <laughs> I, you even told me off. Remember with the um, um, naval action thumb, um, yeah. you told me I should have had the cannons firing when I took the picture, and it, because I didn't, like, because <laughs> yeah. it didn't look as good. And I was like, that man, he knows, he knows screenshots, he knows thumbnails. I get upset when a game doesn't allow you to take screenshots or remove the UI. I get so upset. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to get screenshots now? Well, I got somebody who was commenting on one of the Homeworld videos I put out, and they were they were, they were going quite aggressive, um, in fact, saying that I should have removed the uh, the health bar off the uh, <laughs> they, the ship. I was like, come on, it's only small. You can't see it. But uh, yeah. These aren't anyway. side strafe thumbnails. Ex exacting standards. <laughs> That's what you need to have. <laughs> No standards. That's what you need to have. In fact, <laughs> if the side... we should just have competing channels. If side's all about entertainment with standards, then I don't know what he's even doing on our channel for a start. <laughs> <laughs> there are no standards here, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. That doesn't Mr. work Kirill. as a tag. Entertainment without standards just sounds... I don't know. I'm not... What have you been up I'm to actually... this week, Mr. off? Oh, sorry. No, the guest has spoken. That's fine. <sighs> I'm actually considering putting a beta tag on my channel so that nobody can criticize me, since that's the excuse that we give to games. It's beta. True. Yeah. Or well, it's, it's early access. It's an alpha. <laughs> it's not really an alpha. Because, my channel like, is a super test. What, what about this? Um, Battlefield Hardline. It's, it's, it's a beta. Oh, it's not really, because it's just a marketing <laughs> stunt. Yeah. Anyway. And then people come and defend it. Oh, my God. You know, I made a video on that. I was like, <laughs> this could be another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, Battlefield Hardline, more like Battlefield Flatline. It's a crap game. I don't like it. It's stupid. The whole premise is stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, I'm stating problems with the game, and people are in the comments going, but it's a beta, it'll be fixed. I'm thinking, no, you cannot fundamentally change a game at, 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 at the beta stage, when this is not even in a beta anyway, because it's a goddamn marketing stunt. Especially when it's like, join the open beta a month before release. You're going to have loads of time to you know change stuff that doesn't work then. That's going to be absolutely fine. I'm sure it would work out brilliantly. It's disgusting. <laughs> Well, beta is not even a gameplay change phase anyway. Like from the devs right. that I've spoken to, that's alpha. Beta is polish yeah. fix. So, I mean, a, an alpha should just be no text, just nothing, just a basic, basic of the basic in play. Anyway, we're not going into this debate. We'll be here all day. Yeah. So, <laughs> Mister Kirov, what the hell have you been up to this week, gameplay wise? Played half I don't an hour care of about your life. Uh, so no. don't tell me about <laughs> it. Played half an hour of Homeworld, and then I played Diablo. So that's that's been my week again. Uh, if it, it basically if it doesn't drop loot, I don't care at the moment, which is worrying because I never used to be like that. But Diablo three has overtaken pretty much every other game that I have attempted to play because I play it for a bit and I'm like, this is fun. Where's the drops? And then I immediately go straight back to farming Greater Rifts because uh, apparently I've become severely mentally ill. Because why the hell would you do that? <laughs> Just play the same thing over and over again. It's not even any different. Every single time I play it, it's exactly the same. But every single time I play it, I might get a different drop. So therefore, it's justified. Except it isn't really. And it's worrying. I probably need help. I... Uninstall before it's too late. Yeah, it's, it's the only way. <laughs> I, I don't get... Like... So I, I, like, I obviously get the loot thing. But I don't understand why... I mean, hell, I played it with you, didn't I, last night? And... Yeah. It is enjoyable. I mean, the thing with Diablo 3, the thing that I've always liked with it is the combat feels really meaty when you're killing stuff. So it is pretty like, whoa, yeah, it's visceral, bang, 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 and it's all of that. But I I don't know. I mean, I did a few riffs with you, but then it's like, yeah, and it's time to go and do something else. So I don't know why you keep going back to it. I think you need help. I think you need I, to find a better I game. I don't either, and that's the, that's the problem. I have no idea why I keep going back to it either, but I still do. You know, we spoke about this the other week as well, didn't we? This like idea of like... Uh, uh, Maybe you've got this as well, side strafe. Every, well, I've, everyone I've met has got this. It's a very specific disease, a chronic condition to uh, YouTubers, right? Where you will not play a game if you cannot record the game. Uh. And when you're playing a game, you sit there and you think, well, yeah. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? I'm not recording it. Do you get that? Oh, all the time. Yeah. The, the other day, because yeah. um, I never finished uh, Tomb Raider 2013. And so I was like, let me load this up. 
doesn't you know it doesn't fit on my channel i i had to force myself because i really enjoyed it and i was like that desire to share it yeah like, yeah yeah i want to be filming this so bad or oh. maybe i should have <laughs> yeah but you just kind of like no let me just enjoy something and not have to talk and just you know but it's hard yeah every time you know new game release you can't you almost you get you're excited but then you're like oh, i gotta film it yeah <laughs> you can't just i don't know yeah it's i it, it is a path to ruin as well i mean i, I um uh, when dark souls 2 came out i got this on the ps3 now usually console <laughs> but there was no pc version and i had to play dark souls 2 so i got it and i recorded it and i i, I did commentary over most of it and i started uploading it to the channel now I wanted to do this, I wanted to share this, but this is not a good idea. Because number one, I'm not very good at Dark Souls, okay? Number two, <laughs> this is in like launch week, you know, well, it was the day the game launched. Um, everybody, like, you know, Rui, for example, a Dark Souls channel. Um, yeah. Every other channel. And I people would comment on the video, they'd be like, um, I would really like to watch this, but I'm not. I'm watching this other one instead. And I'd be thinking, yeah, but I'll keep up with it. And I was uploading these videos and they were not doing very well. And it's kind of heartbreaking. It's like I wanted to, you know, and then I felt like I've, I've wasted my time. It's really weird. It's like you've gone to work. It's almost like you've walked into your job and you've sat down and you've done no work because instead you're just playing a game. But that is your job. But when you can't make a video and, and uh, on it, oh, no, it's, it's just, it's just terrible. The... That's one of the things that is actually genuinely bugging me about the fact that I'm enjoying Diablo so much. Because yeah, this is it's what like, I was I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking the fact that I'm just like, I can put on some music and I can just go into the game and I know what I'm doing. And I, you know, if, if something drops, then it's like, it's that little kick you get out of completing a level or anything else when you're playing a game. It's like, oh, you know, I've, I've done what I wanted to do. But at the same time, me sitting there for two hours farming fucking riffs is not a great video it's not it's not like <laughs> nothing's going to change like there's no there's yeah. no different outcome it's not like it's not like say like when northern lion sits down and does does uh binding of isaac every episode is is you know it's something different happens there's different pathways there's different things you can do whereas Diablo 3 it's you get into a rift it's going to be like one of four or five different settings and layouts and that's it that's like all the variation there is the goal is the same. What you do is exactly the same. So I, I could sit there and record all of it, but I'd end up with like like a terabyte of just me sitting there going, not as good as the other bit of gear I've got. And then the next rift, and that'll be it. He's <laughs> like, yeah, no. <laughs> I bet somebody'd watch it, though. <laughs> anyway. Oh, there's always somebody to watch it. Just, you know, it depends. So from, there's always one person to watch it. <laughs> but no I was one trying to do watch. a Dying Light playthrough, and I don't really do playthroughs, but I was really enjoying Dying Light. And yeah. You know, a lot of people remember me from the DayZ times. and mm. uh, But, you know, I was doing like an hour a week of it. But, you know, the amount of people, uh, the people that weren't watching it, it was just kind of like, you know, you're sitting there rendering 60 FPS high bit rates for your computers tied up rendering. It's like it wasn't worth it. So no, I think yeah. some things you just got to say, okay, this is a live stream game. This is a channel game. Yeah. That's it. It, it is true. I mean, I've got a Homeworld um, Let's Play on the go at the moment on the channel, which isn't doing too bad. Um, I think we're we kind of okay. We can do the other Let's Play stuff, and it's not too bad. Um, but again, like, I'm not sure how far that I'm going to go with that, because it will depend on if it's going to crash and burn or not. Um, but again, yeah. you know, I do enjoy the game. Anyway, we're going to talk about GDC this week. So I'm just going to switch over my desktop thingy magic. Oh, there we go. Um, and... We are, so GDC, in case you don't know what this is, this is Game Developers Conference, okay? This goes on every year in San Francisco, and it's not, it isn't really like a consumer event, it's more of an event for, um, well, game developers, as the name suggests, but it's more of like a, an industry kind of behind-the-scenes thing, but you do tend to get quite a lot of interesting news does come out of this. I mean, yeah. it, in my opinion, I've always seen this as the type of thing where you would, like, I don't know, imagine if you were looking for funding for your game, you were looking for a publisher, you were looking to, I don't know, pick up a new engine or something, or to hire staff. It, it's a place where developers from all over the world go together and they, they, there's, there's some interesting stuff which goes on. You get um, like talks from um, various developers and such and they go into detail on how they've made money and all the rest of that stuff and how they've come to this decision and how they've come to that decision and it's pretty interesting. But there is a lot of news which does come from it. And the first thing we are going to talk about, and this is going to be a bit of a running um, theme throughout this uh, hotfix, is, is VR. Now, Sony, um, their Morpheus virtual reality helmet, as the BBC called it, 
Is that, is that what it really is? A helmet? I thought it was just a headset. It looks like a headset. It doesn't look me. like what? it doesn't look like a helmet to me. <laughs> yeah. So um, they've unveiled this, and I believe this is coming out in 2016. They said, but it's got some pretty interesting stats. So I'm going to read this off. So get ready. Apparently, Morpheus now has a 0.018 second latency rate, which is apparently amazing. Um, it's now got a 5.7 inch. Uh, I think it's an AMOLED. Screen green i think um and it runs at 120 fps uh, at 1080p so yeah you what what do you think about that I, like well, the first thing i just want to say about this is how the hell is is sony going to get their playstation 4 to output 1080p at 120 fps for their morpheus headset a helmet sorry uh, <laughs> uh a complete lack of any decent graphics i don't know that's that's something that's really puzzling me it's like i don't quite understand how they intend to to push that performance out of hardware that let's face it so far has not not done the best at you know games coming out at even 60 frames a second or indeed 1080p so how the hell are they planning to to manage that with this i mean hell divers was apparently 60 fps and 1080p at least that's what the devs have said but Helldivers was not exactly the most graphically intensive of games, was it? Well, so... the only thing I played was... I, I mean, I finished Killzone Shadowfall, which was a launch title, which I think single player was like 48 to 60 frames, give or mm. take, and then multi yeah. was usually 60. It was a good-looking game. 1080p ran well. I mean, uh, other than that, I mean, at least they weren't trying to get a, a filmic look. <laughs> uh, uh, that word's banned. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Filmic. Cinematic. So... <laughs> oh, I yeah. Just, I don't. I just. The thing, the thing with this again, like, and this is going to be probably a recurring theme as well, like, as we go through these, these stories from GDC, is it's, it's great that they're promoting it. It's great they're talking about it. But the biggest thing that I've got at the moment is I've not really seen anything where I've looked at it and gone, yes, that absolutely needs VR. Or, you know, I've not seen a, a project or a game announced where it's properly have you caught ever my used attention. It? Have you used it, Side Strafe, an Oculus Rift? Uh, the first generation one. Yeah. Go on, and carry on, Kiri. I just, I don't know. I, I just don't I, know whether it's... Do we, do we need it? I don't know. It just seems such a weird concept. And well, I've yet to see anything, like, that, that's kind of jumped out. And we've had the Oculus Rift for God knows how long. And I, I still haven't really seen anyone would kind of turn up and go look at this game on the Oculus Rift this is absolutely amazing oh my god you've got to do this and I don't know whether it's just because those things haven't been created yet or whether they're not at a stage to be shown off but it's like this sudden flood of check out our VR without there anything really being around to make use of it I don't know that's just the way it kind of feels to me at the moment well um, go on Sarge Drive well I was going to say I mean when I used the issue with the first oculus is that the quality of it was just so terrible the experience mm. was was great but you couldn't have it on for very long the screen door effect and everything with the low resolution just you know that even though it's kind of cool for a few minutes you can't play competitively with it yeah now i, I want to see these new higher resolution displays within them and things like that and to see could you be in war thunder in a flight sim or something or a mech or something like that where it would be really cool but will it be better with, you know, is it something that I can leave on yeah. For, yeah. for a long time? And I don't know. I, I wonder if actually you, that... <laughs> Sorry, go, go on. on. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm trying my best not to interrupt people because I'm terrible for it. <laughs> um, the, like, that's an interesting point, that is about like, it kind of being competitive. Because I was saying to you, wasn't I, just today, Mr. Q, when we were messing around on Homeworld, it would, yeah. be, I, it would be pretty good oculus rift for home world you know you imagine you're in the sensor thing and you're looking around and then maybe you had voice control you know similar to like voice attack running with elite dangerous and you're sitting there and you're like carrier hyperspace here sort of thing and and it it feels amazing yet yeah, to click with the mouse takes a second and it would be you know way more competitive you could never play multiplayer like that but like to me that would be quite a good experience i mean hell i played elite dangerous with the voice attack on for a while and uh yeah I, I I did like that, but I'll be honest. I ended up turning it off because it was getting a bit annoying. You know, you're constantly going like <laughs> all this. I can't even remember. I had like stupid things in like maximum warp, and it would engage the frame shift drive and whatever. And it was like, yeah, yeah this is this is good, but I mm. see. I wonder actually when when you just said there, Sarge Drake about like War Thunder and stuff. 
I wonder if that's part of the problem where the, the projects I've seen for like the Oculus Rift, it's just not had the capability to 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 well to have stuff like that, you know, be used for stuff like that. So what I've seen are, are things like there's a, there's a program where you like escaping a game where you escape jail and there's someone on the outside of the Oculus Rift and they're sort of giving you directions and they can see you things you see things you can't as the person who's wearing the Rift and you have to navigate around and stuff like that. And I've seen that and I've thought, well, it's that's quite a good concept, but it looks so basically so terrible that I'm not sure I'd want to have a headset on just so I could see something that looks like it came from the early 90s. I'm not sure that's something that I'd really go for. Whereas the idea of actually, if you could have, say, like, say, have the Morpheus and have it in, have War Thunder running through it so you could look around the cockpit and stuff, if there were games where it's properly integrated, and you could actually, you know, experience the stuff that you would on a normal monitor, but, you know, tweet to make it properly immersive with the with the VR headset, maybe that would actually stop me from thinking, do we need it to kind of, I need to try this as opposed to, it's a cool idea, but what are we really going to use it for? Because I feel like that's kind of been the almost the big issue with you know, Oculus I'm, Rift I'm especially. Just gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to the de- uh, desktop thingy again. So this is... Um... This is another headset. This is the HoloLens thing from Xbox. Well, it's, it's apparently coming to Xbox One. It'll have games on it. Um, now, I've seen the uh, Microsoft... Um, I forget what it was. It was like a Microsoft Windows 10 event, I think it was. And they showed off um, the HoloLens thing. And they showed like how it worked with um, sort of visualizing concepts. Like One of them was a, a, a motorbike. So the design of this motorbike. And there were designers standing around with a headset on. And they could each visualize different colors on this model that wasn't actually there it was like rendered within the hollow lens but they could all kind of see it and it was like a collaborative design effort type of thing and that like that really made sense for the that type of like the headset it was like wow that could not be done without that headset you know people moving around in 3d space right. but for games yeah. like you said there is a there is a bit of a problem where i i don't know i i i, I mean it's all becoming the rage now as we go back to the face cams, with obviously Sony have announced theirs, so Microsoft need theirs. Well, they've already announced it, but they need to say that we are going to bring games to it because they need to appear to be competitive in that whatever market this is going to turn out to be. But I don't know. I really don't know where this is going to go for them, where, especially on the console games, because you can't just... like I mean, oh my God, I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. You need like a killer game, don't you, for something which really shows it off. Very yeah. genre dependent. I mean, like I said, like I, I did try War Thunder with the first gen one. Again, the resolution was so poor that I would never want to play like that. But yeah, you're in there and and you can look around and, and check your flaps and everything. And I think for Sims, where you're in a cockpit in a vehicle, a tank, whatever, that's a great application because a lot of people already use those. Um, oh, the IRs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. to be in it, a lot of, you know, the simmers, they want to really just be in the game and be able to look around. So I think they're great for sims if you can get the resolution. Otherwise, I think you end up with, like, the Nintendo Wii effect where it's it was cool. Oh, this is really neat. And then at the end of the day, it's like, can I hook a controller up to this because I just want to sit there and yeah. play Zelda properly. Like, yeah. so it, it, it's cool to show off. It's cool to have. But if the resolution's not there, I would I would take a G-Sync ultra wide display any day of the week over something like that at the end i think but that but there's another problem these these headsets are aimed at console gamers um i'm gonna just go out there and say they are not simulated players at all uh, they're gonna want to play call of duty with this thing on the red <laughs> you know what i mean and fifa how are they gonna like what the hell is gonna happen there you know it's just like they are though aren't they which actually leads me into another bit of news good god back to the desktop um elite dangerous uh this has a um it's coming out on xbox one it's uh, not why it's not finished this is honestly this actually genuinely pissed me off slightly because what well, i i can get that you want to expand your market but it's not it the development of that game is still moving along pretty damn slowly even though it's technically released it's still not done it's still missing features it's still missing features that really it kind of needs to be a, a big su- success especially and this is i don't know whether i'm making this like whether this is a a true generalization or was just something I managed to pick up from talking to various people that isn't representative of most, but I kind of feel like you, your typical console player is more of a, I guess more of a, a social animal than, than those who say, <laughs> what are you trying to say? What the hell? What I'm thinking <laughs> is things like, things like Sims do well on PCs, don't they? Like simulators, yeah. flight simulators, train simulators, all that kind of thing. And 
there doesn't really seem to be that much of a market for that kind of thing on console. When I think of console, I think of playing Call of Duty with your mates, playing Battlefield with your mates, playing FIFA against people, that kind of thing. I don't know whether Elite Dangerous is something that is necessarily A, going to take off, or B, going to just be the kind of experience that the vast majority of console players are looking for. It seems like a very kind of PC crowd-centric game to me. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. Yeah. Mm, I, I, I you know what? Oh, sorry. No, it's okay, Sarge Dave. Go. Like I said, I'm trying to turn a new leaf <laughs> <laughs> of not interrupting everybody all the time. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to interrupt yeah, you again. No. Do you know why? It, oh, it, it's I, fine. I, it doesn't I, matter. No, no, Let's no, just no, talk no, over no, each other no, until no, one no, of no, us. No, no, no. So when I uh, go to edit, right, I would sit through the track and every time I'd get to a new point, it would be me talking all the time like, what the hell is going on here? I need to shut my mouth. So I'm going to shut my mouth. Dip it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, with with those games, is it going to interfere with the development? Is it going to slow them down at all to port something over to the console? I mean, yeah. the consoles are basically PCs anyway. So, I mean, PlayStation 4, Xbox, they're, they're computers. Yeah. So it's not as difficult, especially with PS4 not having a cell processor anymore. Yeah, but... that was a crazy decision. <laughs> what the hell was that about? <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> I mean, because even War, Th I mean, War Thunder and Elite, they're two different games, but even War Thunder's on PS4, but I don't know how successful it is, because it's, yeah. it's got an arcade mode to it, but I wonder, I don't know how well Elite's going to do on, on, on a console system. It, yeah, it seems like a weird fit to me, and I, I, I'm just kind of, they're taking ages to do stuff. It feels like they're taking ages to do stuff. It feels like they had to release the game prematurely, and they're still working on it, and Dumping it onto another platform is going to just mean more work. And uh, are they in a position to take on more work, really? Didn't they just add uh, group play just recently or, or no, about it has, to? Yeah, they're about to. This is, what I was gonna, yeah, they this is a problem. They I've still got don't them. have, they yeah. still don't that have the Wingman update. That's basic. Exactly. And that's that's part of it as well. It's like, I, again, whether it's just my own sort of prejudice or the people that I, that I know who play on consoles, I kind of... I kind of feel like if you're going to stick a game on, on Xbox One, you want to be able to have groups of friends playing together. Like, that's yeah. kind of... I mean, obviously, you need that for PC as well, but I feel like that's kind of even more of a of an emphasis that you have with with the consoles than you do the PC. So for that to not be implemented yet, I mean, is it going to be implemented conveniently exactly when it hits Xbox One? Is it going to be a patch that comes out all at the same time, like Heist for GTA Five? I don't know. It's... Well, that comes it back to seems... the development, doesn't it? Interfering with the, with the PC version, you see, because yeah, I, yeah. I love this game. This game is great. Like I, I think I've I've probably clocked close to about two hundred hours of gameplay on this, and then I just I, it's almost like I came to the realization of okay, I've I haven't completed the game because okay, I didn't have an anaconda or anything like that, but I've I've what more do I do now beyond sitting in a resource extraction site or trying to run um, rare commodities across the, the galaxy, which. I'll be honest, it's a little bit boring. Somebody like me who wants to take part in the, the combat. You know, I wanted to be yeah. a pirate. I wanted to sit at the, the nav beacons and, you know, say to people, give me all your stuff. I don't want to kill you. And then just kill them anyway. After they give me the stuff, you know, and do nasty things like that. But <laughs> we, we we did try together, didn't we, Kiri? We tried to play yeah. together a bit. And because it's like heavily instanced, it was a bit of an issue where we'd go to like resource extraction sites. We'd be in the same party, so we would be together. But it would almost be as if we were in our own little world. And for me... I wanted to be in this massive universe where everybody is, not in my own little instance with Kiri with a load of bots. That's yeah. boring, you know. I, and then I wanted to, you know, we wanted the Wingman update so we could do things together, so we could go on missions together and do stuff like that. Supposed to come out um, early January, I believe. Push back, push back, and it still hasn't come out yet, but apparently it's coming out yeah. soon. That time, early January, is when I stopped playing Elite Dangerous. I just. Yeah, I, you know, I stopped, and this was something I would play all the goddamn time. I was making loads of videos for it on the channel. I was really enjoying it. I was streaming it. I was, you know, it was it was really enjoyable. But it just suddenly ran out. Like like I said, there was just nothing left to do, and the lack of co op killed yeah. it for me almost straight. I mean, I I played it for a bit and I did enjoy it. But as I've said, I've, and I've said in in previous hot fixes, in fact, like one of the things that kept me playing freelancer for all those years was the fact that I could play with my friends. You know, it wasn't just the fact that I loved the game, because I did, but it was also the fact that I could go on at almost any time of the day, and I could log on to the server that I played on, and there'll be people there, and you could go off and you could do missions, or you could do PvP, or you could duel, or you could do whatever you like. And I got that with Elite Dangerous, except without all of the social stuff that I liked from Freelancer. It's like the gameplay I really enjoyed. I really like the look of the game. I think it looks amazing. I think the sound's spot on. I think the ship design is actually grown on me a lot. 
the fact is that I can't properly enjoy it with someone yet. And that's kind of that's that's one of the reasons I like that kind of game. It's you know being able to explore this vast area of space with people next to you, and yet there's just like the ability to do that was just not there. So the incentive to play the game kind of vanished very quickly, which is a shame because it's a good game. But again, it's like if they haven't done the Wingman update yet, they keep putting stuff back and back and back. Moving it to Xbox One as well is just going to kill any planned updates they've got. Surely they're well, going to have to work on. I... But I, I don't know because I mean, like 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 Sasha said, it, it it's they are it's the same architecture effectively as a PC, yeah. so it's easy for them to port it across. Obviously, they'd have to make it look a bit crapper because it's the consoles, you know. Let's be honest. But I wonder, um, have they hired new people on, or is it the same? Like, is it interfering yeah. with anything else? That's what we need to know. Is it? What are the sales of the game? That's what I'd like to know right now because I, I think it, it's it it suffers well it, it's suffering from um, I want to say the, the the Daisy effect but that game just keeps selling anyway but it's suffering from like you know when a game's in early access it comes out early you play the game and then like you sort of had your fill of the game then you don't really care yeah yeah you know you don't go back to the game sort of thing and and like Elite I've enjoyed it I know they're going to bring out more ships I know they're going to bring out the Wingman update but will I go back? Maybe there'll be something else then which I'll play, and I won't have time for that. And it's like it, it captured me, and then it let me go. Really, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't have let me go. It should have kept me there because I would have still been yeah. playing. I don't know. Anyway, Fans let's go. Have on. a bad habit of spreading themselves thin, and well, this could be another case of that. It could be another case as well of they they they're trying to make more money, and they think somehow they can make money off a ton of Xbox One sales. I mean, I don't know. It seems. I mean, admittedly, the game does work okay with a controller, doesn't it? Didn't you play with a controller, Kerry? Yeah, I, I I never got around to getting a joystick, so I played with an Xbox 360 controller, which, whilst it wasn't it wasn't ideal, it was a damn sight better than keyboard and mouse. And if you're used to using a controller, I'd imagine, then you'd be absolutely fine with that. I'd, I'd, I'd reckon that most console players would just pick it up straight away. I find it more tricky just because I'm not used to using a controller, but it worked perfectly well. So, But then again, that's another thing as well. I still have to use the keyboard for certain commands and controls. That game is not simple. It's not like it's not like one button does all. You've got loads of menus to navigate and stuff. So when it comes to shifting through like navigation and contacts and bounties and all that kind of thing, there's various keys that you need to press on the keyboard to do it, even whilst holding a controller, I found. So just the logistics of it, I think, is going to be interesting because I'm not sure how they'll pack all of the stuff that's there unless they simplify it to a massive degree, which I guess, I mean, that would make more sense to do. But then again... If they simplify it, does that mean, again, taking away from time that could be used to improve it? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, I asked, I asked on the video. Uh, I'm just going to switch back to the desktop. I asked on the, on the video. I was like, is, is this, is this going to be cross-platform? And according to some of the, uh, the responses, it's not, it's not entirely cross-platform. Uh, it's the same universe. So the same, like, events will happen. Like, you know, they have, like, certain events would go on, like, so-and-so emperor is going crazy, you got to kill him, and blah, blah, blah. Well, we'll kill people in his region, and whatever. But from what I've read there, you will it will not be PC ships against, you know, Xbox ships and stuff. So, again, that's more section off. But, I, I mean, we're going to leave this for now, because I just, I don't know. I didn't expect that. Like, I, I was on record quite a few times going, this is, like, a PC game. Oh, amazing. People have even asked me, they'll go, is this coming out on... Um, console because i made a video which i think it was like an introduction to elite or something it's a pretty popular video so i'm quite proud of it but i i'm like i, I replied to some of them like no it's a pc game go away now i just feel like an idiot it's like well, whatever <laughs> you know get out of here peasant <laughs> this is for the for the pc only <laughs> right so the next bit of uh funky news i've got and this is kind of funky is um source 2 is or has been announced although we kind of knew it, it's, it's been on the cards for a while and it's free like it is free you don't have to pay for this you just you can get it and you can make your game and that's fine but there is one little thing your game has to go on steam and that's it so what do you think of that and what could source 2 actually mean could well there's the free? obvious yeah <laughs> confirmed Again. Confirmed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that the would... time to do it. Well, should... actually, that... uh, let me just go back to the desktop because also, as well, we'll throw this in. Uh, Valve's Vive VR prototype headset. Um, terrible name. From HTC. I'm, so, just, I'm calling it terrible name. I'll, it's I'll, just... 
Are we being set up here for a like a Oculus Rift style VR Half Life Three on the Source engine, or the Source Two engine? I kind Maybe. of don't. Well, that's the thing. I'm kind of so sick of the whole Half Life Three confirmed thing that I almost don't want to speculate that that could be the case. But the th- it kind of, to be honest, it would make sense. People, for some reason, were expecting them to announce Half Life Three at GDC. Well, they expect that for every event, though. <laughs> because I mean, if they if they if they've announced Source Two, they've announced their own VR headset. They are not and then the going to say as well. <laughs> and the controller. They're not going to then say at a developers conference, "Here's our new stuff." Oh, and by the way, we'll be making the most popular game that this stuff will ever see. Because that would put people off from using it. That's a stupid idea. That's like just saying, "Here's our engine. We're going to use it, and uh, what we're going to do will get all the attention." But I honestly, I could see it happening. I'd be, I, I would be both surprised if they did announce it officially and not surprised because it's been way overdue. But on the other hand, it's been so overdue that I'm kind of wondering whether they're even going to bother anymore at this stage. But if you think about it, if you think about it, it's like Half Life Two, Half Life Two is kind of the big. That was almost like I'm not going to say the invention of, but really bringing like physics play into into the mainstream, like the way you had to solve certain puzzles and the way the physics worked in the game. That yeah. was like the Valve showcase of look at this technology, look what we've done with it, and that was you know that was the big thing for Half Life Two. I mean. In a way, Half Life Two kind of loses its impact if you go back and play it again because all the physics-based stuff you see all the time in every game anyway now. So it's like it's not much of a big deal. But then it was. It was like this is the showcase. So if they if they've got a Source Two, if they've got a VR headset, they could quite easily use Half Life Three the same way they used Half Life Two to showcase a new technology, like an amazing new technology. Because Half Life Two is the physics and the AI. But don't Games you need all over? Have got that now. Don't you need like the widespread adoption of the VR headsets before you do that, though? Because I mean, Half Life well, Two, yeah. everybody had a PC. Well, anybody of worth had a PC, so they would have played that on the PC. Um, you know, I don't have a frigging Valve VR headset yeah, yeah. or whatever. This, you know, this is why I'm this is why I'm kind of wondering whether they whether they'd bother. It probably, I because it would it would be a great would. technological showcase of you know look what we can do with this technology. But on the other hand. What the technology that they'd be using it, like they'd be using, is not widely available. You know, you don't make, you, you don't, you wouldn't make Half Life Three in a medium that most people couldn't access. That would be stupid. That would kill it outright. No, and it people would just be pissed cool off. So, but it's like I, I don't know. I, I kind of hope they just do something original with it, or announce something kind of new and mind blowing instead of just going, yeah, it's it's the sequel to that other game we made ages ago. I'd much prefer that because that's. They seem to have gone away from developing anyway and gone more towards being a service provider and a like a I guess not an innovator, but attempting things like the Steam box and this headset and the Steam controller and they've got what? the that what is it called? Link as well, the little box where you can stream you yeah. your PC to your TV. Um it seems they seem to be shifting more towards kind of develop not games development, but software development and hardware. So well, We'll we'll go on to Steam OS and and the Steam boxes in a minute, but I want to know what you think about Source Two and the fact that you need to if you use it and it's free, but you have to put the, the game then if it's a commercial release has to go on to Steam. Is that a good or bad thing? For an unknown developer, it's not a bad thing. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, even a lot of bigger titles like a lot of free to plays end up doing this. They try to find success without a platform. A year passes, two years, they don't find it. Then they decide, okay, because obviously if you jump on Steam, Valve takes their cut, whatever. So they don't like to be on Steam, but in some cases they have to. And in some cases, Steam can save a game or make a game even more pop. A lot of people don't know about titles until it hits no. Steam. Yeah, They don't go to news sites. They don't ask people, they, oh, what's this? So it, especially if you're a new developer, and you're not greedy, and you're just like, I want to get this out there, I want to get it known, then I wouldn't really see a huge issue with it. I mean, but then again, there are a lot of engines to choose from, like, you know, Unreal 4, Crytek. Unity. Which, well, Unity. Cry- Crytek. Crytek's a pain oh. in the butt to work with. I would not recommend anybody go with that. Uh, just from what I'm seeing of it, it's like the only people that know how to use that is Crytek themselves. <laughs> so uh, anytime I see somebody else use it, it's, it's a mess. But... There's other choices, you know. I'm, well, I'm curious it, to see what people do with Unreal. Oh, well, there is. I mean, Unreal, you've got the... Um, I think it, they take a percentage, don't they, when you make a certain number of sales, Unreal do. So if you get a wildly yeah. successful title, they will start making quite a bit of money off you. Yeah. Uh, Unity, I think, is some form of subscription system. 
or something. Um, but Valve, they are essentially going to take 30% of when you sell a unit on Steam, which they do anyway. And my kind of way of looking at this is... <laughs> I think it's kind of easy to get a game on Steam anyway. <laughs> if you look at Greenlight yeah, and all of at, that mess, it's like... Yeah, yeah. when you look at some of the shite that's on there, it's obviously not a difficult process at this <laughs> stage. So, <laughs> But you're going to have it on Steam anyway. So I don't... Like, you would never release a PC game in this day and age and not want it on Steam. That just seems really strange. You would not do that. You, you would want yeah. it on Steam. So I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I would... I'm not a... I'm not a game designer. I don't. I've never used any of these in any kind of designing capacity unit or anything like that. But I would say, as being a stupid layman, that I wouldn't. I, I I'd be like, well, Steam Two's okay. Source Two's fine. We have to pay for Unity, but we don't have to pay for Source Two, and we get inclusion onto Steam effectively, which we wanted anyway f for our Unity game. But then, of course, you've got all of the stuff like the Unity store you know all the assets and probably a load of people yeah. have, you know this it's probably easy to find people to work on that so i don't know i don't know i i don't really think it's that much of an issue no I, I, oh, sorry go on <laughs> it's going to depend how also how easy it is to work with i know a lot of devs that have chosen uh source just because they're familiar with it because they've been familiar with like quake engines and things like there's a lot of similar similarities i think yeah. even source comes from that kind of background heavily modified versions of those old engines. Yeah. Um, Unity's obviously easy to work with. Naval Action's doing well with it. Um, yeah. uh, Unreal 4 is trying to be a lot like Unity in, in, in terms of ease of use. That's what devs are looking for, which CryEngine does not have the ease of use thing. So <laughs> that's, that's the thing. I mean, if Source is good, I mean, uh, look at Titanfall. Titanfall, those devs respawn. They said, yeah, we want this engine because we know how to work with it. It's easy to work with and so if that, plus the Steam inclusion, like you said, it could be a win-win situation, but... I think it's kind of, in a way, I think people are... I don't think people would have any sort of issue with the fact that you have to include it on Steam if it wasn't for the fact that the Unreal Engine is, like, completely free. I think that's probably what's... Because there have been people like, oh, well, you know, yeah, but they're doing this, why aren't Valve? But the thing is... It's only free you, until you make money on Unreal, is yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, and also... Let's be honest, if you're putting if you're making a game with Source 2 and you're putting it on say you put it on like the Humble Store or something, the fact is if it goes on Steam, the chances are it will get the majority of its sales from Steam. That's like most most indie developers that have made it big, that have had decent sales, you know, they will outright say, Well, on our own site we sold however many copies, but on Steam we got ten times that. Because Steam is a massively trafficked site that, you know, you know, very helpfully puts titles in categories of you know what type of game they are. New releases. You've got people like, uh, well, you've got people like Jim Sterling, who, anytime there's a new game that looks interesting on Steam, does some sort of video on it, which then spreads it out. You know, if a game launches on its own platform, then the chances of it being picked up by someone or a group of people is, let's face it, quite a bit less than the chance of that happening if it's on Steam, which is, you know, massive. So, do you think that could ever happen kind of... again? Like, do you guys think that could happen? Like, a, a game could actually launch, you know, similar to, I guess, World of Tanks, uh, League of Legends, uh, any Blizzard game on its own platform and be and be a thing now. Do you think that's that's ever going to happen again? Well, I guess we kind of have... We, we've sort of got a, a little bit with things like... I mean, Elite Dangerous was its own platform, wasn't it? That's never turned up on Steam. That's, But then again, that's not yeah, massively, is. massively, that, massively yeah. popular. I mean, it did well, but it's not like, you know, we've taken over the world popular like the others. But I think I think there's still space for it. But I think it kind of depends on how it approaches. I think if a game just comes out of nowhere and is like, "This is us. This is our website. Buy our game." I'm not sure it works. But things like Elite Dangerous and like Star Citizen, they've got kind of benefits in that they were on Kickstarter, so they got that big publicity rush to start with, which then kind of meant that they don't really need Steam as such because they've already got momentum from the fact that they were able to be funded. I think I don't think we're going to see a game just come out of nowhere. On its own platform again. I think we'll see the ones from things like Kickstarter. I think that's because, well, in fact, we've already seen that. So that's obviously that can happen. But I think most of the time now, if if a game's kind of going to be released somewhere, it's unless it's been Kickstarter, it's probably going to be on Steam. Which, I mean, in fairness, there's a reason for that, which is that Steam is well, it's as big as it is, and it occasionally brings out you know you find really good stuff on there devs try but, to avoid it they they, they they don't want to be on steam i mean look at a lot of the free-to-plays 
that are yeah. not like world of tanks is obviously a gigantic success they don't need to be no. there so they never will yeah. be war thunder yeah. however wasn't as successful for a long period of time and it they decided to move to steam and that helped them a lot they've got other issues of course but it helps them a lot hawken which is just dying at this point but another game that avoided steam for a very long time it, it seems to be a lot of the free to plays try to get away with not being on it and then they yeah. have, oh, we're, we're not. you're on steam mechwa not yet. I believe they announced yeah. them moving to it. Um, what was that ninja game? I always forget the name of it. The Space Ninja Game. Wolf it was free. Free. Yeah, that was its own thing for a while, wasn't it? Then, then that That's launched on Steam. Steam. Too, yeah, yeah well, it, yeah, it eventually yeah. went to Steam. And I don't think that's doing too bad at the moment. But yeah. Um, the thing is, is it is it like, I know there's obviously things that need to be that needs to be done to get onto Steam. Um, I'd, I'd love to actually one day well, research what those are. It's got no Q and A as it's Steam. on it. Um, but I, I kind of don't really understand the attitude of we don't want to put this on Steam. I understand that they, they you know, they'll take a percentage of sales and so on. But you, you accept, you've got access to a much larger, you know, potential user base. There, you've got the. No, when these games sort of say, "Oh, well, we're on our own platform, but we're not doing well, so we want to go onto Steam," I always kind of think, "Why weren't you on Steam to begin with? Was it just we don't want to pay out that it's percentage?" The cut. It, it, I mean, I've I've you know spoken with develop. It literally is the cut. They don't want it. They want to see mm. if they can succeed without it. Simple as that. Um, mm. Some hope that they can. Some think that they can. And they usually, yeah. you know what? You know what this is like. It's like us with um, YouTube networks. <laughs> if only we didn't need one, but you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Um, anyway, uh, there. I, let, let's do it. There's, there's like a couple of game announcements. So this one. Uh, oh God, what have I done? This is uh, Wolfenstein: The Old Blood. Now, I liked the new Wolf game quite a lot uh, when that mm. came out. Um, very much an old school FPS game, a load of weapons, massive firepower, and it was pretty good. So I'm actually looking forward to this. And like I did say, this is obviously about GDC, this uh, hotfix. There are game announcements which do come out of it. I think Sony had some sort of thing going on down there. So uh, there was a few uh, Sony things were announced. But this doesn't look too bad to me. I mean, it's basically um, Wolfenstein in the last year of, of the war. It's like a prequel to uh, the game. When did it come out? 2013 did it come out, the Wolf game? Or 14. Think no, it was so. the early 14, wasn't it? Early last year? I'll, f I'll find out. Something like that. Um, I mean, did you play this side straight? I quite enjoyed this. I didn't I didn't play any recent Wolfensteins, unfortunately. Other than the... My time was mostly spent in, like, the original and... What was the other one that came out? I had really popular multiplayer back in the day. I forgot. Oh, yeah. and um, Not Enemy Territory. Oh. Uh, enemy Territory came after it. it Before was Enemy Territory. Return, yeah. Return yeah. to Castle Wolfenstein, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, other games we've got uh, uh, Stardock. Now this is I quite like Stardock because I like um, most of the games they publish anyway. But uh, especially Sins of a Solar Empire, they've announced a game which is called uh, Ashes of the Singularity, which is not good. I haven't got my webcam on. That's why I'm waving the knife around as well. <laughs> They're like, what is he Box doing? Cutter. So um, they've not a good they, name. They, but no, it looks but this it looks, looks interesting. Yeah, this is like uh, apparently a spiritual success to Supreme Commander. They've said like a massive, massive yeah. RTS on a massive scale, which I don't know could be good. I mean, I I've got I mean more RTS. I've got faith. Well, hell, we, we played Grey Goo, didn't we? I like Grey Goo. Did you play that? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. You know what it was? I I can't get into the factions. I have yeah. to like a faction in an RTS to like want to play it. But I I just I, it looks cool, but the stylization for me wasn't there. It's dead now, though. It's dead. There is no multiplayer community at all. It's just gone. Really, and and that is quick. That is really quick. Wow. I think yeah. th th there was there was um, a post. I, I haven't got this on me because it just came out of nowhere. But there was a, a, a an article on it, which even at its peak, it was only about three hundred concurrent players online, and then it went to nothing. Which is kind of bad. It's a shame and, because that was you know that was a decent game. I. I I did like that. It was kind of expensive, though. That's what put people off. That you know, it was it was really yeah. expensive for what you got. Um, kind of like After the me, I think. <laughs> I think probably as well the the branding might have been not quite there as well because grey goo is not something that screams RTS to that me. Was a bad I don't know. Idea. 
Uh, it just, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, I liked the design of it, and I, I have to admit, I actually quite like the factions, but at the same time, I kind of liked it because I knew what it was, whereas <laughs> if you just say to some random person, you know, be them, whether they're a gamer or not, Grey Goo, they'll just be like, what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. It it's sounds like, it like an iPad hints, game, it? like, that you probably yeah, yeah. play with. It. Like, yeah, it does, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> It's like um, World of Goo, yeah. It's like that. It's like a disease. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Like. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid you've got grey goo. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was okay. Um, the factions were a bit... like uh, What was interesting about that game is each faction had a totally different play style. I don't know how balanced yeah. this was. I don't think it was balanced. I think the, um, the beta faction were uh, overpowered extremely, which I think is one of the reasons why multiplayer collapsed a bit. Um, the goo faction, where you sort of didn't have any structures, you just had a massive, like, pile of goo which spawned units yeah they were funky and um the human faction were kind of their whole base structure sort of depended on power conduits so they had to sort of send power to the buildings and and they were like really defensive i thought i thought thought in, in a way it was kind of unfortunate because i thought the most interesting part of that game was the goo faction but at the same time i think the thing that probably put most people off was the the goo part of the game like the the goo part of the name the fact that you had a faction just called the goo it's like it doesn't sound it does not sound like uh like a an old school rts thing to me it, it never did and i think that's probably part of the issue that it didn't really take off because a lot of people just didn't know what the hell was going on it was just oh there's this rts it's got goo in it but it doesn't mean anything and you can't you can't really market a game without being able to explain you know without with People having to explain what it is all the time. It doesn't work like that. So. Those are like Westwood devs, right? From like Command and Conquer. Yeah, yeah. it's Petroglyph. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like uh, Command and Conquer. Um, I think uh, Empire at War, the Star Wars game as well. I think they did that. So they know how to make RTS games. And it, you know, to be fair, it was the single player campaign. Like I, I'm a, like an absolute sucker for that. I'll sit down and play old school RTS games. I mean, hell, the the, the, the YouTube channel is called Unit Lost because of Command and Conquer. You know, unit died, unit lost. So I mean, bloody yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it had a good single player campaign, a very old school single player campaign. It, I, I did enjoy it, but yeah, that's fine for me to say when I've just been given a press copy of the game. But I haven't actually go out and spent money on the game. I, I would feel a bit bitter, I think, because there wasn't enough to it, especially with dead multiplayer. Yeah. That's bad. But the next thing I've got is uh, is an interesting one. Now this is from Polygon, and I bet all of us here have played this game on on our iPads or iPhones, or Android tablets, or whatever. And this is um, Crossy Road, okay, which is like a dodgy <laughs> mobile game, <laughs> which is, it's Frogger. It's Frogger. Yeah, it is Frogger. They yeah. just ripped Frogger off, right? But all the kids downloading the game don't know what Frogger is, so they think this is new and fresh. Now, they uh, did a speech at uh, GDC where they essentially said, we've made $10 million in three months. Now, that sounds like quite a lot. Well, it is quite a lot. But when you're talking about the the App Store and a game which is one of the top downloaded games, for it not to break into the top 200 in terms of revenue, okay, is a pretty strange thing, okay? But it still made $10 million in three months, in 90 days, and it's a three-man team. Now, what, what, what interested me about this was they they say that they decided to make a free game, like a freemium game, but not actually chase the um, the microtransactions or, you know, a lot of these games tend to be like time lock, don't they? Things like Clash of... Cash of Clans. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you've done too many actions. You must pay money if you want to continue to play, which is terrible. But that game's always like the top earner in the... Uh... Let's go back to the faces and look at a wall of text. It's always yeah. like the top earner. Uh, on the app store and all the rest of that stuff but these guys were saying what we decided to do is just make the game and not that there are things you can buy like different characters but we're not going to throw it in your face and we're just going to leave it and they've made 10 million off it which for a three-man team is pretty bloody good and that was apparently profit as well maybe we'll see more of this happening instead of like i obviously pc is the best platform for gaming but i don't mind playing games on my ipad if they're okay games unfortunately mm. every good game on the ipad has essentially been a port of a pc indie game to the goddamn ipad things like ftl um the, there's knights of the old republic is on there um and, and papers, stuff, please now papers I mean, please, like, is... all, all like old games uh, well bioshock's on there but that's really bad so don't download that 
<laughs> so maybe we're going to see more people off the back of this because obviously developers go to GDC. I might be thought, you know what? Let's actually make a fucking game for a change that people can play without having to. Oh, you can only play a little bit of the game, and you need to pay this if you want to unlock it, or put the time walls in front of people, which I absolutely hate. And I just wish there were better games on my mobile devices. Well, one of the worst ones for that was the uh, the Dungeon Keeper mobile game. Oh, which, that, oh. by the way, I that uh. essentially I. <laughs> If I ever meet someone who says to me, "Oh, I've I've played that; it's quite good," I will actually kill them. Like I will murder them and then bury them in the darkness. I just no. <laughs> to take Dungeon Keeper and turn it into that is just the worst. But that was like that was a prime candidate for all that time lock stuff. Like you couldn't dig out, you couldn't dig out blocks. You can only dig out a certain number of blocks, and then it took a certain amount of time. But if you bought gems, then it would dig out quicker. And the fact that I just like the fact that someone's actually made a game where you don't have to pay for anything. Literally, there's nothing to pay for if you don't want to pay for it. It's just, oh, do you want a new silly character? Here you go. That's it. That's that's. Please do more of that because we might actually have people what? making games for you know the fun of making the game as opposed for as opposed to what can we stick behind a you know behind a time wall or a pay gate or whatever. I... They did change their um, the app store. It had a new. Um category which was games i don't know what they called it but it was just games pay that, once and play yeah and this was the, the, these were just games that were just you, you bought the game and that was it um obviously in the case of this game it, it was just free to play anyway but you could play the whole thing for free it was kind of it was more similar yeah. to um what you would see uh, in kind of a lot of free to play pc mmos i want to say things like um I don't have an example now. Uh, somebody bail me out. Uh, cosmetic um, um, things only. No, nothing which actually alters the game. So it doesn't really matter. You get access to all the game. I think Marvel Heroes yeah. does this. Yeah, I don't think that's really. I was going to say level. like I was going to say like Heroes or League, but then you can still buy new champions. So does that really count? That's kind of similar. Well, I, yeah. I don't know. Kind of a grey area that anyway, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's it, it, it was just an interesting thing I've seen. I mean, I do like reading this kind of stuff, and I thought that that's pretty interesting. It is nice to know what goes on kind of behind the scenes. And if we do well, see now more... Even... Go on. I'm sorry. No, no, I, no, I no, no. You on that no that's fine. I don't mind being interrupted. I want no, people to interrupt that, Well, me. now, I was going to say, because we were talking about the App Store, where Apple even changed. It doesn't say free now. It just says get. So, because there was too many games that would say free, but they're freemiums. You know, there's, there's stuff that you they're not... There's paywalls and things like that. So now they've changed it. So instead of it, like a free button, it's a get button. So you're getting it. You don't know what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting a surprise. So. I think in the UK, there was, um, uh, they made that illegal, didn't they? they you, you couldn't say it was free because yeah. it's not free yeah. or something. You have, to, dis like, you have yeah. to disclose. Um, if, if there's anything in the game that requires payment, you've got to disclose it. If, if there's anything in there that requires payment, you can't just say it's free, which I, <laughs> it's fine by me. That's a good system. Well, like, I, they, they think, it, I think they got me with them, like the when when Apple did the whole pay once and play thing. Something that I found interesting about that is that that was like that actually came back to me not via websites or anything. That came back to me when I was talking to my mum on the phone because she actually said to me, "Oh, at work they were talking about this new thing on their iPhones where you can just pay for the game," and I was thinking, "Yeah, that's just a normal thing." And then I kind of I had to sort of step back and think. Except no, it's not really, is it? Not not for mobile gaming. That's like that's almost like a relatively new concept for the person who gets out their iPhone at the bus stop and plays Candy Crush or Clash of Clans. It's not something that you actually see as much as just getting free stuff, which is just weird to me. It's just uh, it's a weird aspect of gaming that I still don't understand the mobile side of things. Well, a different beast. It it is it is it's it's frightening as well. I, especially the biggest thing is like, um, or which is kind of not really the biggest thing, but the people who play a lot of the uh, the games on the the smartphones are generally not people who play games anyway. So I've had some very entertaining conversations with uh, some of my family that know nothing about gaming, but they know what I do. So they're like, "Oh, you've got a gaming YouTube channel," and they will legitimately say things to me like, "Do you make videos on?" Um, it's not Candy Crush; it's something else. It's with pets in it. It's the same company, and I'm like, "No." No, I don't. But they're like, why not? And you it, should. It's like, yeah, it's a really strange. It's like they're like, well, why don't you? And I'm like, well, it's because it's just a bejeweled clone that you're paying for. It's absolutely shit. Get out of my face. 
I don't say that to them because they disown me. So uh, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it, it is, it is, it, it is strange. Also, they'll say like, "Do you play Minecraft?" And I'm like, "No, no, I don't." I have a YouTube channel. Oh, so you play Minecraft? No. Yeah. Or, or, there was a um, oh, who was this? Stampy, Stampy, somebody. Stampy Long. I think he's in our network. Stampy man. Side straight yeah, watches him all the time. Stampy Minecraft long videos day, day in day favorite. out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Um, one of my family members said to me, oh, you, I, I've, I've read in the paper, one of the newspapers about this guy, um, and he's got this big YouTube channel, and he, and he does this and does that, and he plays Minecraft. Do you play it? And I said, no. And they said, why not? I said, because I, I don't. And they're like, well, you should do, because he's got a big YouTube channel. That's what you should be playing. Everybody wants Minecraft videos. That's what you should be doing. That's why. See, I, there you I'm, go. I was like, no. Weird. <laughs> you, won't be a, you won't be a phony at all. No. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my Minecraft adventure. Today, I'm going to talk like a. F I can't swear because it's for children. <laughs> and uh, we're going to build something again. Yeah, let's build a house. <laughs> oh my god, there's a creeper. <laughs> we just lost thousands of subscribers now, all of us together. No, we've gained thousands. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've, 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 yeah, it's always that. <laughs> yes, down with Minecraft. No, they outnumber us though, so we got to be careful. Well, I'm of this mindset. We are in a big ocean, <laughs> and the ocean is YouTube. Okay? And there is a wave, <laughs> and it's Minecraft. It's, <laughs> uh, uh, and people like PewDiePie, they're big waves. We benefit from the wave, right? This is an amazing metaphor. We benefit from the wave, so everyone benefits, even though we, we might necessarily not. Um, um, Once in a while, some seaweed uh, flows in our direction. Yeah. <laughs> Top or something of, <laughs> and, and then anyway so i'm afraid i have totally run out of anything i mean is there any is there any other topics we can talk about any other bits and pieces of news that's anybody well, really desperately wants to talk about something that you completely failed to do at the start which i was going to let go but i've decided not to now. have i failed you asked, I always fail you asked you asked me what i was oh was playing shit the past week. Ask... you didn't ask side straight you didn't, and you didn't say me. anything about yourself either no. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> what have you been playing this week? Well, now that you ask, Minecraft. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Minecraft, actually. I just got a new uh, mod for it. No. Um, Homeworld, of course, remastered. Of course. Um, War Thunder, Naval Action. What have you um, gotten uh, locked on Naval Action now? Actually, I'm still. St well, because they, they re. They added, you know, there's new ships in, so I'm, I'm still on the uh, the new Navy brig, so I need to get out. And I haven't played in the past week or so, so I need to get to the, um, the Cerberus. And then, I mean, I have up to the Constitution, but you have to Not, kind of... Yeah, we, we, you've got a back yeah. date to yeah. back unlock the ships, haven't we? Well, we, I think we're in the same kind of situation now, because we've got the yeah, Navy brig, Yeah, the Navy we? brig. Yeah, with yeah. the f go faster red stripe down the side. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were talking about Elite Dangerous, I mean, but... Honestly, I'm more excited about Naval Action's open world now. And I never thought uh, that I would be at all because I was no. never into Age of Sail. And all of a sudden, you know, my buddy Ram JB got me into it. And I'm loving it. I'm more excited about that than Star Citizen or Elite, really. Just I've fallen in love with the time. And mm. it's especially good for us as well because there's an absolute shed load of British ships, which I keep <laughs> constantly like. Yeah. Oh, what's that? That's not English. And it's like, no, actually, it is. You stupid idiot. I'm like, oh, yeah. I only really know about Never victory. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, especially when you correct me as well in my own comment section. I don't know. I think, or whatever you do on Twitter, no, no, I, that's on uh, Skype. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, trying yeah, to make you look. I'm trying to feed you some for, for next time. <laughs> it just makes me embarrassed. Like, do this. Oh, no, I do know that the Constitution is an American vessel. Because it's yes. called the Constitution, and it has. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> waiting for there to be some sort of like. There's that. <laughs> because I read something about it. Are you going to give us some sort of history lesson? He says because it's called the Constitution. <laughs> it's just like... that, that works. That's that's all we need to know. It, it, I mean, it's also got it stars and strikes on it, it as well. It does so work. <laughs> <whatever>. um, <laughs> so I suppose I better ask myself, what have I been playing? Well, I've I've been playing Homeworld, and uh, quite a lot of it, really. I mean, I've. I've um like a lot of people were like yeah, Homeworld 1 is 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 the better campaign and I'm not sure that is exactly true. They're different. Homeworld 1 and 2. I I I think I prefer Homeworld 2 because it's more of a 
I think the combat works better in Homeworld 2, and it's more of a uh, you-are-at-war-style game instead of you-are-running-away Battlestar Galactica-esque style like Homeworld 1 is, you know, where you're essentially trying to find your homeworld, as the game name suggests. Yeah. Um, I mean, we played a bit of um, multiplayer, didn't we, today, before we came on uh, uh, for Hotfix, and it seems to work okay, doesn't it, Kiri? But again, there wasn't very yeah, many people yeah. playing. Was there just like four games no, up with that? I was genuinely surprised by that. I thought there'd be a lot more people playing. I mean, I get that. I get that the multiplayer is kind of in beta, and you've got yeah. Really annoyingly, you have to sign up to the shift gear that, to shift thing, which is that was surprising. Yeah, you do, you just don't want to add that extra step into Steam games to get onto multiplayer because. People don't like it. I mean, that I don't will deter like it. People. Like, um, one step will deter somebody, and yeah, you know, it being yeah. kind of separated from from the game in a way. Also, the fact that the link to the website doesn't bloody work as well on, on the launcher for me. But like when it said when it was like, oh, click here for the multiplayer. I click the thing. It's like, oh, you need a shift account. And I was thinking, oh, great, okay, fine. I clicked the link that it comes up with, and it just did nothing. It didn't open anything. I was like, oh, great. What is this about? <laughs> And it makes yeah, type beta it, in as well, doesn't it? Beta. Yeah. It just seems like a weird, a bit of a weird decision. I mean, I'm not sure what the rationale behind it is, but it's. I, I mean, it works. This is the thing that's getting me, though. I mean, there's a warning that says, you know, this is like a combination of 15 year old code and code from last week. So that's why it's in beta, because we're writing stuff out. And that's kind of fair enough. But at the same time, I couldn't really see any issues at all. And I kind of don't really get why it's there. I remember with. multiplayer with Homeworld Two. It was like join an IP. I think it was very basic back then. It was like you know yeah. find your be... tell your friends to join your IP to to create yeah. a, a game. There's I mean because back then there was no matchmaking like there is in, in StarCraft no. or Company of Heroes and stuff like that. So I think they're having to kind of just start from scratch with multiplayer. But I think a lot of people will be deterred because. Like newer generation gamers are used to matchmaking systems, yeah. and this one doesn't yeah. have that. And if and then some people might rely on that to the point where it's like, well, I can jump into StarCraft or Company of Heroes two instantly, Dawn of War, whatever, and and find a match. Where this, it's like, here's a list. I, I don't know. It might deter it, some newer well, gamers. I think it does. I think it deters yeah. a lot of people as well. I mean, it, it's sort of that syndrome of you have to play with your friends, but there's always one friend who is vastly better than the other friends at that game <laughs> this happens with civilization yeah. as well in games like that it's like yes let's have a game of civ so you're sitting there with like five people but you know that bob over there is absolutely amazing at the game and he's gonna win <laughs> so it gets to a point where it's like oh i can't be bothered no more i've clearly lost he owns everywhere and i'm about to die and it's sort of the same you could say with homeworld i mean if we if you got like on a really big map and somebody was clearly a lot better than somebody else it would you know, it would be like, oh, we're just getting stomped now. This is, you're, this is you're kind confident. of confident. You're like, all right, I think I have a fleet. All of a sudden, battle cruisers warp in. You're like, eh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, well, and, then you leave, <laughs> and then you leave. That, you know, that always annoyed me with StarCraft. Although, I, StarCraft is a good game <laughs> to enjoy. But it always enjoyed it. I like do my head in this whole, when I first worked out what this, why are they typing GG in? What's this all about? And then they just leave the game. I'm like, no, you have to stay there and let them wreck the base. It's <laughs> like, you know, I've won, I will kill you. <laughs> I Why do you think I like playing Dawn of War 2 Retribution against you for Face Off Friday? <laughs> I played that to a ridiculous degree, so I just know Space Marines inside oh, out. That's the one you always beat me at, isn't it? Because I beat you yeah. at the first one, and I Dawn of War. <laughs> yeah. I, just spam I, can't, those units. <laughs> I can't play Dawn of War 1 anymore because I played Dawn of War 2 so much. And they're so, like, the two games one. are so different. How much would you pay? I would pay I give insane it, amounts of money for a remaster of 1. To me, I would 2 is a good game, that. but it's a different game. Yeah, It's it completely is. different. It is. I love 1. The thing is, I, I think by the time reason. by the time two came out, I was kind of so hyped up for it that when I played it, the fact it was different, I was kind of I didn't like it as much at first, but it kind of felt because I preferred playing Space Marines over everything else. It kind of felt like they'd actually done a better job of representing Space Marines in two than one, because in one it was like you'd have hordes of assault marines kind of flying across the map, and I always thought to myself. There's not many. There's not meant to be this many of these guys, you know. Not, there's not like you don't have the entire chapter just deploying in one massive lump. So in Dawn of War Two, when it was like just squads and stuff, I kind of I felt that a lot more and played it a lot more. But it means now that whenever we go back to play the first Dawn of War, I just sit and I'm like, oh shit, base building. Oh god, what do I do now? I've got no, I've got no idea. I can't Build order this. It always bugged me with the Eldar as well in Dawn of War. Uh, where it was just like this dying race is just sending endless hordes of people to die. It's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it doesn't, just go, go, go. I, <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, 
I, I, I mean, I'd kill to see Dawn of War 3, provided it was... Um, I mean, hell, I, I would just take Dawn of War 2 again uh, in the form of Dawn of War 3, but I think I do prefer Dawn of War 1. I think, in fact, I'd like to see something where they kind of meet because I did, I did like the whole like cool yeah. mechanic thing going on with um, Dawn of War 2. You can take the best... Well, because the cover stuff... Because you have to think, Relic, Dawn of War, of then Heroes. they did Company of Heroes, yeah. and the cover yeah. stuff came from Company of Heroes. And so they, yeah. they, they're taking from all of their games. I think if they could mix them up a bit i don't know because i do miss i mean i'm terrible at rts's i can't multitask that's what it comes down to <laughs> you know give me a small group whatever or just you know a single vehicle or unit to control fine but i, I am i love rts but i'm terrible at them uh, i'm too slow at them whatever but i'm the same <laughs> i even with that said i would still rather have you know a, a dawn i think a dawn of war one like remaster or new one I just feel like a lot of the the core fans were disappointed because they were expecting. I, I think you would just have to change yeah. the name, but I guess it's a marketing thing at this point because Dow Two is just not the same thing. So no, no. It, 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 the only way it was similar, I guess, is you could say it was an RTS game, but that was about it. It wasn't really like. A, also, it didn't have correct squad sizes as well. What was with the tactical marines, man? I thought you could have a ten man squad. <laughs> That was the other thing you saw. You have a four man squad, but where was the where's the where's the five? What about a combat squad? Five, five squad, combat you know? squad in it. I mean, what the hell? Anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do they still have license? Like, who has? Are they still? Is Relic still allowed to make I, I, Warhammer stuff? I don't know. I mean, I know Sega has Relic now, so yeah, it's all over the place. But, um, this is this is what's confused me because there's you know there's tons of Warhammer forty k stuff kind of being churned out. They're giving the IP to pretty much anyone and everyone, but. For some reason, Relic, who did such a good job, we're not hearing anything from them. I mean, I, I kind of come to the... Con I'm, I'm just assuming that they don't have the license anymore, and that's why we've not heard anything, because you could they could announce Dawn of War 3 tomorrow, and pre-orders alone would absolutely, you know, flood in. Um, so, I I don't know. I'm kind of worried that actually that that just that series and that iteration of... of Warhammer 40k games is kind of gone now. I mean, I'd hope it isn't, but I suppose the thing is though, um, Sega do own Relic, don't they? Or Relic, yeah, I think Sega own Relic, yeah. don't they? So, I mean, now if Sega, yeah. if Sega do have a license, well, we know they've got the license because um, Creative Assembly are making a Warhammer Fantasy game, and Sega own them yeah. or something. So uh, maybe we will see a come. I mean, I, I, it's just it's a game I want to see. I mean, like, like we all say, we all want to see that. It's just. There's been too many shit Warhammer games, and it really does me because yeah. I really like the. That's remind. Talk about this. Just remind me. Have you seen the trailer for Vermintide, the the Warhammer End Times game that's being made by Fat Shark? Have you seen yeah, the trailer I for have, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, admittedly, yeah, it's Left for Dead. It's, it's like yeah, Left for Dead universe. Yeah. But I actually, I'm actually quite looking forward to that now. I'm not as I'm not as big into Warhammer Fantasy as I am 40k, um, but they've got kind of, I guess in a way, a very sort of similar style to them. Um, but it actually. It actually looked quite interesting. I think that could be one to look out for. And the fact that they're actually tying stuff in like an end times game to the tabletop end times release, maybe that means they're going to start kind of trying to tie things together more, you know, get a, a decent schedule of, of big releases out. That would be something to kind of, I know it's a very faint hope to gain from just one game coming out at the same time as a, as a new tabletop edition, but it'd be nice if that's the route they went down because then we might see more, also you know, more stuff. I've just thought, Mr. Kiri, I, I was also playing Unreal Tournament this week as well, because the uh, oh, this yeah, again yeah. was from GDC, where they said, oh, um, it, the new Unreal Engine, blah, 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 you can just go and download the pre-alpha if you want now, which I think people could already download if they had, I think there was a, a way of getting it, but hmm. um, have you played this side strafe? Because this is quite polished. I have not, Even and, uh, yeah. I need to. Yeah, this, this, is, this is really quite good for what it is at the moment in pre-alpha. Yeah. Because obviously there's only one map. I think there might be two maps actually that have got textures on and, and the maps are fairly close to being finished. All the other maps are all like the classic Unreal Tournament maps you remember, like um, what's it called? Deck something, I forget. But uh, that, I've got no textures on so it looks like you're playing Quake 1. <laughs> like it looks terrible. <laughs> but like, it, 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 don't you ever. <laughs> it feels, it, I, I was quite impressed with this. And I, I mean, Kiri wow. used to play Unreal Tournament all the time. All the yeah. time that you're like all the time. I mean, I I used to play. It I wasn't good it, at I mean, it, but I used to play it a lot. <laughs> firing the Redeemer, yeah, getting a vehicle. Yeah. Good God, what a beautiful game! I'm, you know, a, a lot of people know me for playing like realism games and like stuff like that, but they don't know. I loved 
you know, mid nineties, late nineties FPSs, Quake, you know, uh, Unreal tournaments, all the I love those games. And there's just there was yeah. what was that Nexuiz or something it was like the only game that kind of came out that was kind of that fantasy yes. sci fi jump around yes. shoot at stuff. Like nobody makes those games well, anymore. Like but tribes, instead... tribes as well. Um, what else would we have had? Uh, well, I guess Half Life. So Counter Strike. So yeah, yeah. You know, I'm really happy that Counter Strike Global Offensive is doing so well when when pro gamers yeah. aren't cheating all the time and winning all the competition. <laughs> yeah. I had an aim bot. Oh, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite, um, I'm quite interested to see how the uh, how it plays out um, for Epic with Unreal with the whole like. The game is free to play, but everybody can sort of make things with the Unreal Engine and sell them on their marketplace. So it's kind of like Valve with Dota, um, yeah. and sort of like there's another example of that as well. Um, Sony, well, when they were Sony Online Entertainment, they had the, I think it was called the Player Forge or something. So you could make yeah. items for Planet Side Two and then sell them, but I guess that didn't work out. Well, unless it's still a thing, it must still be a thing, but who knows? Um, hmm. But yeah, it very it looks good, doesn't it? And you were playing it, weren't you, Kiri? And you're not the best yeah. at FPS games, but even you were enjoying it, wasn't it? You said this is oh, what yeah. you remember. Yeah, it's, it, it just I I was never a big fan of uh, I think it was Unreal Tournament three. Two thousand and four was the one I really really like sank a lot of time into. Yeah. I didn't feel UT three was quite as good, but I, I got real sort of I got like two thousand and four vibes from from the pre alpha, and I mean all the old weapons are back, which I I just. They, they just seem to be doing a really good job with it. And that, the fact that it's so polished as well, like it wasn't getting into a game could be a bit tricky and there are obviously oh. things like server crashes, but the actual mechanics of the game, like the way the guns felt and sounded, the way the movement worked, everything seemed pretty damn polished for a pre-alpha. You forget, or I forgot how how like exciting it is just to play that type of hectic arena deathmatch yeah, shooter. It's, it's you know, so well, quick. you can let loose, I think, a bit more. And, yeah. and your mind, see, the yeah. problem I have with games like with Call of Duty and what Battlefield has even become, is that to me, those games are kind of unreal, but with modern military skins. The gameplay's yeah. arcadey, but then the skin is like, so my brain's like, well, I have an M4 and it's a 5.56 millimeter round and I shouldn't have to shoot a whole magazine that, you know, so with unreal, I can be like, whatever, I don't know what this is. It's a, you know, I got a lightning gun in Quake yeah. or whatever. So I don't care, I don't have an expectation. Yeah. Which is why I'm actually looking forward to Battlefront if it's good, hoping it's good. Yes, Star Wars. It, yes, yes, because it doesn't matter. Please. It needs to be good. It I, needs to yeah. be. You, you know what? <laughs> if that's really not good, <laughs> they're gonna have problems. They're gonna have big problems. I'm fairly <laughs> sure if it's if it's not good, some mental's gonna burn down their office. I'm pretty sure at this stage. <laughs> that's it's, the it's, last that 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 franchise has <laughs> got that it's 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 legendary status that. So they can't Beyond. Ri- they, they they can't uh, afford. They can't afford to screw it up. They really can't. I think it. I have faith in it because they've they have t- they've had time to develop. Dice yeah. in the past few years has not been given time. It's once a year. Yeah. With this, they were restricted. They said, I think Disney was like, you can't release until around the movie comes out. So that meant that EA was not allowed to put a gun to their head and say, oh, release now. I think if you give Dice time to make a game. Because they're talented. We know they are. They're great yeah. with art. They know how to make a game. It's just, it has to be done right. And You know, you know, I, I remember playing um, Battlefield 3 at launch, um, which was pretty bad. But I do remember the one thing which sort of stuck in, in my mind was the, the sound design of the game. The way you're running through a metal container and all the sound would change because you're actually in a metal container and things like that. It was like a, a cargo shipping container thing. It was, it was very good, but... I mean, I, I'm still going to stick by my Battlefield Bad Company Two is the best Battlefield game. It, that wasn't very, times. yeah, that was again wasn't very realistic, really. But it, <laughs> for the fact you could blow stuff away, that I I enjoyed that. That was some. I really loved the fact that there, there were so many right. times in that game where I can't remember what the map was called, but it was a snowy I, map with like a small town in the middle of it, and you could hide in a building. Is that where you parachuted hide- in? You, yeah, you yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. You'd be hit behind a wall, and then there'd be an explosion, and the wall would no longer be there, and you'd just be standing there like, "Oh shit!" And then you, that was it. <laughs> you know, you were dead. And I just, I never got, I never got that same kind of excitement that I got out of Bad Company Two out of Battlefield Three or Four. It, it just never really picked me up the same way. But you were out of Battlefield Hardline, by falling buildings, because that's a good game. I've no. heard. <laughs> My thing is though, is like, because I, I played, I've been playing since ni- Battlefield nineteen forty two, and I'm, I'm sad to see I the maps getting dumbed Eagle. down. 
fight me. Everything just did you put Codename Eagle? <laughs> deal, deal with it. <laughs> Codename Eagle song. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pre- it, it, yeah, but I played. I used to um, El Alamein on Battlefield 1942. There used to be a server, and I, th- I think it was G4 something, but it was like 256 man. It was laggy as shit, but it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I see, that's the thing is. God, <laughs> the maps are getting dumbed down now. Yeah. The obje- like you look at the, oh, the map is huge. No, it's not. Oh, the re- you can't go out past this boundary, and all the objectives are kind of consolized because they're all close together. For because they were trying to get the the COD market for the longest time, they need to yeah. go back to what they're good at and make a true Battlefield title the way you know. But I don't right yeah. right now. I think it's just all about Battlefront being good, and I don't know what's going to happen with that franchise and. We already have a COD, a new COD every year. We don't need a second new COD every year. We want, you know, there to be different. Be Devs choice. need to, yeah, not be yeah. stop being afraid and make something that make it good. Stop making, stop worrying. If, there's an article. Oh, I have to share this with you guys. It's amazing. The guy, uh, the guys from Hinterland Studios, uh, Long Dark. Oh yes, um, the survival yeah. game. Yeah, I, yeah, I quite like that. Players in the driver's seat is is what they say. Okay. Um, it's not. Uh, what was a great quote? Let me find it. Um. It's it's absolutely amazing. It's 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 totally what I've been saying recently. Yeah, this quote. It's not our job to make the game the community wants. It's our job to make our community want what we have made. Yeah. Devs need to make the games that they. I, if you were a dev. Yeah. You'd be saying, you know what, I've been dreaming about this all my life. I want to make a fantastic game. You want to make the game that you dream about playing. How many times does a community come in and affect the development of a game to a degree where it just changes what its original you know, vision was? Well, I mean, here's yeah. the link to that article for you guys. You, you can kind of compare um, that to, I, I guess, even a YouTube channel. Uh, again, you need to do what you enjoy doing you don't want to do what people come and tell you to do so when they turn up and they're like oh yeah you should play this game or hell we want to see a video of this you know it's not necessarily the best idea you kind of have to uh sort it you broke my overlay with that link i'll have you know (laughs) pc gamer's fault it's okay (laughs) i don't know i fixed it (laughs) so um i think i have whatever so um yeah i think um I think we'll we'll leave it at that. I, I well, unless you want to talk about anything else, I'm I'm easy. Easy you heard it here. It just um, I'm easy. Confirmed. Stylos of 2015. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on who it is. So I think that's I, d- yeah. That's, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're going to leave it at that. So uh, this has been Hot Fix, and uh, we've, we've we've tried our very best to go over what news was available from GDC and some other bits and pieces. And uh, our special guest has been Mr. Sidestrafe, who... Thanks for having me. If you would like to plug all of his channels, and he, <laughs> there will be a description link, because Mr. Kirioff won't forget like he did last week, because did he forget forgot week? to put it in. For no, Mr. no, Lionheart. I did. No, you did. I put it in, but I missed the HTTP out the front of it. That's what I so did. So it was not clicky. And like we said, people don't well, like it if they've got to do something. They're not going to copy and paste. <laughs> they want to clicky. No, there's, there's no manual anything. It's not happening. No. So the floor is yours, <laughs> Mr. Sidestrafe. Promote away. Promote away? Well, I hate I hate self-promotion. I hate it, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Sidestrafe. Everything is Sidestrafe. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. It's all... Just look up Sidestrafe. You find me. But... Um, I want to work with you guys a little bit more. We need to do some some more naval action. Well, I said homeworld, and, uh, didn't I? Multiplayer. And, uh, we, should, we should play some, some homeworld, homeworld, maybe. Although that might be to play. slightly unfair if I get me and Kiri. But though he'd stab me in the back, he would kill me. I know he would. Well, like, well we're going to need somebody to to kill. balance the fact that I'm terrible at it. So, yeah, well, I'm not very me. good either. <laughs> uh, well, then we're good. We're good to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I'd just though. be worried about Stide kind of sitting there turning away, and then suddenly he turns up with a massive fleet and wipes both of us out with very little effort. That's what I'd be worried about. Well, I'll tell you now, there are some filthy tactics. The things like um, equipping the scout <laughs> scouts with the MPs and EMP in the <laughs> shit out of somebody's fleet before you go in on them. Very dirty, but very effective. Using cloaked fighters as well, if you're Higaran, uh, is massively OP because they probably won't have stealth detection anywhere with them. Because why would you? They might have, but it, you would just kill it. So it's like, mm, fine. Um, 
Fire control towers are massively OP on the battle cruisers. Also, they're pretty good on carriers, but you need to keep them with the fleet. Um, Vega, the mobile command ship, is, I think, a bit OP as well, uh, because it does the same thing as a fire control tower, but it's smaller area of effect. Uh, and Kamikaze, I don't know if you know this, Mr. Oh. Kiribati, but I don't know if you know <laughs> this God side Christ. You Kamikaze... Um, a shipyard is a large, massive, super capital ship that builds the massive super capital ships. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what that is. Everyone knows what it is. You can destroy that with three Vega assault craft if you kamikaze into it. it, it they kill it. Yep. It is, it is stupid. Yeah, honestly, and it is, <laughs> instantly. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it was on the seas where he went, he just went, I'm going to try I, something. I'm going to kamikaze in the back of that. And I was like, go on then. Thinking to myself, this should be funny. It'll maybe take out the engines, but it won't do any damage flew in and then my shipyard just exploded <laughs> instantly i was like what <laughs> excuse me it's bad. tactical <laughs> absolutely mental so i know a bit about it but uh if you watch a video that goes on the channel on friday <laughs> i'm not that good so <laughs> there you go all right guys we're gonna leave it at that it's been hot fix it is the best video game podcast on the internet on youtube and on every, on planet earth in the universe galaxy whatever and uh if you like it then do like the video because that does help a lot and uh, make sure you comment below because, as ever, we always read the comments with Hotfix because it's interesting to see what people think. Unless you're just being an, an arsewipe and want to be aggressive, then I'll delete your comment and ban you off the channel. <laughs> we'll catch you next time, people. Toodaloo.